hungry. I have no food. But maybe some idea or something. Uh, yeah, so um, I'm basically just going to talk about uh, some packages and sort of techniques that have been useful to me uh, in my research uh, so far. And um, so, yeah, Zelig and, and Matchit are two of those. And then I'm going to end by doing something. Because actually, something I, the conclusion to this is actually going to be something I came up with this morning. So it's uh, some very hot off the press political science research. And it's actually a cool result, too. So. Um, there we go. So, uh, Zelig. Um, it's a little hard to describe Zelig quickly. Uh, you'll probably get a better idea through the examples I'm going to show. Um, but essentially, it, it, it's a package intended to sort of bring, toge bring together um, lots of, basically any statistical model you would want to run and ha let you do that with common syntax and make the result easily interpretable. Um, so it's written by, actually, so a common thread with a lot of the software we talked about is it's all uh, at least partially developed by Gary King, who's a professor of political science at Harvard, um, and who definitely deserves credit for producing a lot of really great software that makes our lives much easier. Um, so he does, he does the thinking we can just type Zlig and does it for us. Um, so, so essentially, the, the way that Zlig generally works is you, you'll either, you, you have your input data set, and um, you can either do some, some, if you have missing data, then you can uh, do some multiple imputation using Amelia, which is another package which I may show a brief slide about. Um, and so, so for those who don't know, when you have missing data, you'll often do, uh, do, do a process called multiple imputation, where you're sort of um, creating reasonable data based on what you do have, and you create uh, multiple data sets of this, and then you want to run your analysis on all of those and combine them. And so Zeo will do all of that for you. Um, if you use Amelia, and then matching, as I'm going to talk about later, you can also input a match data set. Uh, you can even do both, I'm told, though I've never seen anyone actually do that. Um, so then the Zealog is sort of the stage where you run your statistical model, uh, then you can do a summary, which is similar to what you do to an LM, GLM model in R, just, you know, checking your results. Uh, and then one of the most useful things you can do is, um, so, so often in models you'll, you'll, you'll your summary will just give you a bunch of coefficients. So the sort of canonical example is if you have a logistic regression, you're going to end up with your betas on your coefficients. Um, but you're not necessarily interested in those betas. You're interested in changes in probability, which is sort of the, the quantity of interest is the kind of uh, term jargon used a lot in Zeeley. Um, and so you can use these set x and sim functions to actually create confidence intervals uh, on those probabilities for, for certain fixed x's, which is what you're doing at the set x stage. And then you can also get some nice graphs using the plot. So that was a lot of talking for not showing anything. Um, so again, so the Zlog stage, you're, you're essentially putting in the formula in normal R syntax, which I'm guessing will look familiar to most people. Um, so then uh, the, the model is is the statistical model you're going to choose. Any you know, so anything from least squares, logistic, uh, multinomial, loaded, almost any statistical model you can imagine. I think maybe twice I've wanted to do something that Zlog couldn't do. Um, out of quite a few models, so it's got it's it's pretty extensive and it'll, it'll only grow. Um, so again, the, the the data can just be any old data set, or it can be something. It can be multiple imputed data sets from Amelia or match data sets. Uh, and then actually, I haven't actually used this yet, but if you can throw in this little buy function uh, for a buy a factor, and it'll run the model for every factor, and then probably shove that into a list or something, which which may be useful for people as well. And, and then obviously, there's going to be additional parameters for for every model as some models of specific parameters. So um, here, here's sort of a basic example with uh, it's an ordered probit regression. Um, so, so we're trying to predict, uh, so this is 1992, how well you prove of George W. Bush the first. Um, and so this is 1992, so apparently no one approved of the Missouri SC. Uh, and so this is from the National Election Study. And, and so there's sort of four levels of approval. There's the strongly dislike, dislike, approve, strongly approve. Um, and so we're, we're trying to predict that using, uh, using this uh, model called ordered probit. Um, I'm guessing, have people seen order, do, does that, do people know what that is? Um, roughly, you're, you're, you're trying to predict the levels that people are going to support it with and put a probability on that is essentially what it comes down to. Um, so I'm just sort of reading the data here. And then, so this is the Zlig line here. Um, so I'm turning this approval into a factor, which it, need, it needs to be a factor for this to work on an ordered factor. Uh, and then we've just got a couple of covariates telling it what data, and then model equals O probit. Pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, 
So, so what, what, what I'm going to look at here is how you think about the Gulf War, whether it went well or not, uh, affects um, whether or not you approve of uh, W or HW or whatever. Um, and so, so I'm, I'm using the set X command to sort of create two sets of uh, you know, covariates um, that are going to be set at the mean for everything except for this gulf variable, which is going to be set at 0 or 1. It's a binary variable. Um, and then, so this, so that sort of sets up the comparison we want to make. And then this line here basically does a simulation of that comparison. Um, and then, so down here I'm just giving you, this is just uh, giving you what's contained in this Z-Log model, which is, should look pretty familiar, you know, this is similar to what you get from an, uh, a linear model of GLM. Um, I think you, like, TOLR, I think is the function you'd usually use to run order probe it. Um, and then down here is sort of what you get out of this uh, S-gulf, this sim line. Um, and so the cool stuff, there's actually there's this QI, so you're going to know these quantities of interest, and that, that sort of contains the data from a thousand simulations of, um, you know, taking the various covariance matrix of the parameters, grabbing some of them, you know, simulating for multivariate normal or whatever, uh, and then figuring out, you know, what are the probabilities of each category, and then you can do stuff like this. So, so, so you can do stuff like taking the first difference um, between people who uh, were happy with the Gulf War, people who weren't happy with the Gulf War. And so they were, um, so if you're happy with the Gulf War, you're much less likely to strongly approve them, slightly less likely to slightly, dis slightly approve of them, um, much more likely to slightly disapprove, and then also more likely to disapprove, strongly disapprove them. Um, and so, uh, you know, th this is stuff that, that you wouldn't necessarily be able to get out of just looking at coefficients. Um, and so then this, this is the, the plot function. So as you can see, mo most people don't like him very much. Uh, he wasn't very popular in 1992. Uh, he did get trounced in an election so. <laughs> by, a, by a guy who's now a hostage negotiator, apparently. <laughs> um, and so, so this line here, so this is just the, the unconditional uh, density of um, so the density of the, the probability of being in each category. So you know, again, not many people uh, strongly approve, and then most people strongly disapprove. The middle categories are in the middle. Uh, and so, then, so this is kind of what we're interested in here. This, this is the, this is the uh, impact of going from not approving to approving of the Gulf War. And so you know, not surprisingly, it makes you much less likely to approve. Um, nothing really profound here, uh, but it you know, produces some nice graphs. Not quite maybe like journal ready, but uh, for, for just going through a quick analysis, um, it's it's very very convenient to do this stuff. Um, for those who are like super excited about the Bayesian stuff last month, uh, you can ba basically any model you can put dot Bayes on the end and it'll run the Bayesian version. Uh, so if you're Bayesian, you can just put dot Bayes on the end and there you go. Um, and so I'm, I'm just sort of comparing the, the the coefficients you get from the non-Bayesian versus Bayesian, and, and there, there's actually no real difference here. So last week was a waste of time. Sorry. Uh, okay, so that, that, that's my just basic Z-Lig. Um, you'll see a bit more z as I go along here. It's got really great documentation. Um, uh, you can know, Google it and it'll show up. And um, there, there's, there, for basically for every model, there's a nice little summary of uh, the basics of it and what you can get out of it. Um, so next time you want to run some statistical model, you should check if z can do it and see what pretty output it can make for you. All right, so now moving on to uh, matching. So, um, so a common goal in pretty much all of science and the social sciences as well, of which we're members, I guess, uh, is we're generally trying to figure out the, the causal effect of some x on some y, um, whatever that x may be. So, you know, an example I'm going to talk about later, uh, it's the effect of, um, you know, a leader of a country becoming involved in some war, basically on their security in office, and whether or not that'll increase the risk of being kicked out of office. And so, you know, we want to know a causal effect, the idea being, um, you know, if we observe leaders entering these conflicts, should they be more, or are they more or less likely to get kicked out? Uh, we'd like to know that. Um, so, I mean, the, the, the general solution to this is, you know, run a randomized control trial. So, sample from the population, uh, randomly assign some people to be treated, randomly some, assign some people not to be treated, and then just um, look at your outcome, in the, or I mean, in my outcome, how long you stay in office, and just do a difference of means test. Uh, but, um, you know, un unfortunately, 